Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all our Guru Maharajas. Maharaj, today we are going to study from Canto 7, Chapter 8, Verse Number 8. Whenever you're ready, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna. I want glory to Prabhupada my obeisances. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sarishvaram Kala Urukrama Sav Oja Sahar Sattva Balandriyatma Saiva Vishwam Paramamsva Sakti Bi Srijatya Vayati Gunadrayesaha Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead who is the Supreme Controller and Time Factor is the power of the senses, the power of the mind, the power of the body, and the vital forces of the senses. His influence is unlimited. He is the best of all living entities, the controller of the three modes of nature. By his own power, he creates this cosmic manifestation, maintains it, and annihilates it also. Since the material world is being moved by the three modes, and since the Lord is the master, the Lord can create, maintain, and destroy the material world. Omigyanti miranda sya gina jina salakaya chaksum nulitam yena tasmai shri guru vena maha. Shri chaitanya manobistam stapti tam yena bhutale. Swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swa padati kam. Mom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Sri Makti Vakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunyavari Pasyapti Ade Satarine Vanchakopa Trubischa Pipa Sindhu Paiva Chapatita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyona Mahona Mahajai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm -hmm. The material energy consists of three modes. These modes are energies that influence the, condi the conditions of living entities to act and think in a certain way. These modes are very powerful and they're created by the Lord. The Lord maintains them, creates them, and destroys them through his different energies. Through the creation, he does it with Lord Brahma, through the maintenance, Lord Vishnu, and through the destruction, Lord Shiva. So this verse is just showing the all-powerful influence of the Supreme Lord in connection with the movements of the material energy. So for those who are actually uh, thoughtful, they can understand behind the force of these material energy there is someone or some power that's making it all act in a certain way. There is a class of people who think that the material energy is independent and does and moves by its own accord. And when there is change, it's simply a combination of different energies moving in the material energy to make changes and develop 
and to reduce and to destroy. That may be true, but ultimately there is a force behind all of that that's making it all happen. Just like whenever you see something happen, there is someone who's made it happen, although you may not see it. For instance, uh, when you switch on your light in the room, uh, you pull a switch and the light automatically goes on. So is the switch the cause of the light coming on? Yes, but is the switch the cause of the light itself? No. A light is coming from another source, which is the powerhouse. And that powerhouse is maintained by a person who conducts that energy and distributes it through various electrical arrangements. So when you see something that you can't connect it with, its source, you have to understand there is, behind it, there is some intelligence. Because nothing works by chance. And chance is a word which means I don't know. When people say chance, it means I don't know. Uh, so chance is not a cause of anything. Things don't happen by chance. Things happen by a force that is being directed by a person. In other words, an intelligence. And in this case, the supreme intelligence or the source of all of the intelligence is the supreme Lord himself. And everything moves by his will, it says here. Controls the time factor, the senses, the mind, the body, the vital senses. Um, this is spoken by Prahlad Maharaj to his father to, to uh, respond to his father's challenge where do you get your power from and beyond that there is a source of power there are a class of people who cannot understand that and they speculate but their philosophy and their conclusions are always incorrect because it's simply based on mental conjecture i remember i was sitting once time in niagara falls in new york And uh, um, <clears throat> there we were watching these gigantic waterfalls from a distance. There was a place where you could stand and watch everything. And these powerful waters coming, you know, millions of gallons of water flowing over the side of them, this gigantic mountain. <laughs> and it's... And it's happening so fast that these gallons, millions, millions of gallons are like practically every minute. There's so many unlimited water just flowing over. So it's a sight, it's power. So uh, we were sitting there watching and there was a little boy next to us. And he was being, come, uh, he was being somewhat amazed to see it. So he turns to his mother the boy must have been about six years old. He turned to his mother and said, Mommy, who created that? <laughs> so, and she said, well, actually it was, in, it's nature. And in other words, she couldn't give an answer. All she said, it's, it's, it's nature. And one of our devotees happened to be there. And he said, he turned to the lady and said, actually, it's created by God. <laughs> and then she responded to her son in the same way. So, yeah, so anything that is phenomenal within material nature cannot be connected with an ordinary person. Way beyond the abilities of an ordinary person. So here, the whole material energy itself is so complex and so gigantic and Shristi Stisti Palaya, it can create, create, it can maintain, and it can, can destroy. But it's doing it through the agency of the Lord's energies. And behind the Lord's energies is the Lord. Like Just like behind the electrical energy, there is the powerhouse. And behind the powerhouse, there's the person who's operating the powerhouse. <laughs> 
So everything has a cause. Nothing is happening by chance. Uh, one time one devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada's talking about this idea of chance, how nothing happens by chance. The so one devotee was saying, well, Prabhupada, I was taking a shower this morning and the shower piece broke off and fell and hit me on the head. So that was chance. Prabhupada says, no, because you're a rascal. And that That's the reason why it happened. So the cause is you're a rascal. <laughs> so so behind, behind everything, there is a cause. <laughs> it was an interesting response by Srila Prabhupada. So here, we and devotees can accept the fact that behind everything, is the hand of the Lord. Go be go to the next verse, verse number nine. Janasuram. You go to the Sanskrit. Janasuram bhavam mimam tum atmanam. Samamano dwasta na shanti vidvi saha. Vitejitam atmana utpate stitat. Tadi yan antasya mahat samarhanam. Translation. Prahlad Maharaj continued, My dear father. Please give up your demoniac mentality. Do not discriminate in your heart between en enemies and friends. Make your mind equipoised towards everyone. Except for the uncontrolled and misguided mind, there is no enemy within this world. When one sees everyone on the platform of equality, one then comes to the position of worshipping the Lord perfectly. Hmm. Very interesting statement. Purport. Unless one is able to fix the mind at the lotus feet of the Lord, the mind is impossible to control. As Arjuna says in Bhagavad Gita 6.3.4, Chanchalahi mana krishnaham brahmati balavadritam tasyaham nigamam vanye vayoridam saduskaram. But the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, it seems to me more difficult than controlling the wind. The only bona fide process for controlling the mind is to fix the mind by, the, by service to the Lord. We create enemies and friends according to the dictation of the mind, but actually there are no enemies and friends. Pandita samadarshanaha. Samas sarvashu bhute shu mad bhaktim labhate param. To understand this is the preliminary condition for entering into the kingdom of devotional service. Is there more? Or is that it? Can't see. Okay. So here, um, so our our conception of a reality is based on the the principle of the fe the feature of the mind. When the mind is happy, everything looks nice. When the mind is unhappy, everything looks unhappy. When the mind is focused on the Supreme Lord, then it's engaged above the three modes of material nature, and therefore it can become fixed or controlled. The three modes of material nature are always moving. And therefore, when one fixes their mind on the material energy, the mind cannot be controlled because the, the material energy is chanchala. It's flickering. It is, uh, it is unsteady. The modes are always competing for supremacy. Therefore, the mind is also dragged by the, the movement of the modes of material nature. 
So what, what is being said here is that one cannot control the mind in a material way. One can only control the mind when you bring it to the spiritual platform. And here it says, when one worships the, the Lord perfectly, then the mind can be uh, controlled. And part of that understanding is to come to the platform of dira. Dira means that one doesn't see the dualities of this material world. They see only this material world working in such a way, and they use it for the service of the Lord. Therefore, they don't conceive good or bad. Everything can be used in the service of the Lord. But here, it says that he's talking to his father. Because his father, Harani Kashipu, said, you're siding with my enemy. When Pilar was giving him instructions, and then he's saying, well, you're actually, you know, my enemy is Vishnu, and you're siding with Vishnu. Therefore, you're siding with my enemy. One minute. But Pallad Maharaj says, there are no friends and enemies. It's just the feature of the mind. Just like we see sometimes we make friends with someone and then after some time that person is no longer a friend, he's an enemy. Um, sometimes people become our enemy or we make they make us our enemy and then things change and then it's no longer enemies anymore. It's friends or neutrals. So what is it? It's the feature of the mind who determines what is good and what is bad. That's why Lord Chaitanya made a very powerful statement. He said, some people say this is good and some people say this is bad, but I say this is all mental speculation. Everything in this world is bad. So what did he mean? What did he mean by saying everything in this world is bad? Because everything in this world is meant to take one away from the goal of life, Krishna consciousness. But everything in this world can also be good when it's used in the service of the Lord. But outside of the service of the Lord, it has no real value other than bringing the conditioned souls farther away from their relationship with the Supreme Lord. So when that says, he says it's bad. But then also in that same verse, he says, good and bad are simply conceptions of the mind. <laughs> so we see here the same thing is being uh, emphasized by Prahlad Maharaj. When then when one comes to devotional service, they see every living entity as part and parcel of Krishna. Although they see the body, they understand within the body is that soul who is a spiritual entity, who is not material, who belongs to Krishna, who has nothing to do with this material energy. And so they don't make distinctions so between friends and enemies because they see everyone ultimately as a energy of the Lord or a spiritual being Although they see that person, maybe they are within the material world, but they at the same time, they are not material. <laughs> so Vaishnav sees everything in relationship to reality. In this world, people live in illusion. They see everything in relationship to their own happiness and distress. This is good because it makes me happy. This is bad because it doesn't make me happy. 
this is no this is useless because I can't see any 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 value in it. So everything is given different labels by people in this world. And therefore there is no stability and no understanding. Now, people live in the world of illusion. They accept reality in the sense that whatever works for me is reality and when, uh, what doesn't work is also reality but coming in a different form but we say that in this world nothing is real because everything is changing therefore it's temporary and it's also meant to cause the living entity difficulty as krishna says in the bhagavad gita um Dukaliyama Sasratam, that this material world is temporary and miserable. It's temporary and it's at the same time miserable. He doesn't say temporary and happy, he says temporary and miserable. Because the misery is, it takes one away from the goal of life. So here we're, we're seeing uh, a little bit about that the mind, the mind is... Uh, is like a mirror that reflects inside what's outside. Prabhupada gives an example like that, how one sees the world in terms of the consciousness that one has developed. That's why no, no two people see, see, see the same thing in the same way. They may be similar, but not exactly the same. Because the conditioned mind is what it is. It sees things according to its own conditioned nature. And the example Prabhupada gives is that there is an old man. He's sitting in the living room and his wife is in the kitchen cooking. This old man is deaf. He can't hear well. So he's waiting for his wife to cook the evening meal. And he calls. He gets a little impatient. And he calls, my dear wife, when will the... the uh, when will his supper be ready? And she calls back to him and saying, just be quiet, read the newspaper, I'm still cooking. And so after some time, he calls again. And she again calls back. And this time he's thinking, you know, I'm calling my wife and she's not answering me. She must be deaf. But he's deaf because he can't hear her responding to his call, but he's thinking she's deaf. So this is how the material energy works in such a way as Atmanam Banyate Jagat. Everybody thinks everything works according to the way they think. <laughs> but everything works under the control of the Supreme Lord. If you want to understand how things actually are happening, one has to take knowledge from Krishna or from his pure devotee. And then you can see things clearly and understand what is valuable and what you can leave aside. And then the devotee can, can make progress towards the goal of life. Otherwise, the mind will always give you here this particular verse quote, quoted by Arjun that he's saying, you know, mind's impossible to control. It's unsteady, turbulent, obstinate, very strong, restless. If you'd ask me to control the wind, it might be easier. But Krishna, ultimately, in the next verse, and then he says, yeah, but if you engage the mind in the service, or he said, abhyasena tu kunti avaira gena chagriyate, if you practice, his practice means engaging it in devotional service, and you stop trying to control the material energy through your mental proclivities and abilities, then you can gradually bring the mind under control. When the mind is under control of the self, then the mind reflects the pure self through its activities. When it's not under the control of the self, it creates its own sense of reality. And therefore, people are always fighting with each other, disagreeing with each other, because everyone has a different conception 
of what is right or what is wrong, what is important, what is not important. So the world goes on like that. And so this place is called, uh, it's it's a funny farm. It's just a place of nu people who are completely nuts. They have no brain. Their brains are so uh, destroyed because they simply accept illusion as reality. So therefore, we don't give credit to anything, any activity in the material world because it's being explained and manipulated by people whose minds are under the control of an illusionary conception of reality. But one Krishna says, one who sees me and everything and everything in me, I am never lost to him and nor is he ever lost to me. So that, that that verse comes down to the reality that everything is actually the energy of the Lord and ever, the Lord is within his energy and the Lord is also moving the energy by his different energies. He uses one energy to move another energy. But he is be behind it, everything is there. So one who engages in devotional service is not affected by the movements of the material energy because they know behind the material energy is the controller. Therefore, they are engaged in the service of the controller. Therefore, their minds are fixed and not being thrown from side to side by the movements of the material energy. Okay. Hey, these are some things we can think about. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. What a wonderful, extremely, extremely important class. Thank you for um, giving us all those tips. I have a um, couple of questions. Um, as you were saying, um, the mind is chanchalam, right? So it goes from places to places. And the only way to fix the mind is that when we offer the mind to his uh, to his lordship at the, at the lotus feet of Krishna. But the question is, we can do all the services, we are doing japa, but it's still not, the mind is still not there. It goes and it's still not there, Maharaj. That's why Krishna answers Arjuna's question in the following verse. He says, yes. by constant practice and detachment from material activities, one can gradually bring the mind under control. It's not gonna happen immediately. It's a process by which you engage in devotional service and gradually you start to control the mind because the three modes of material nature are not, uh, they, you can't fix yourself on something that is, is, is constantly changing. But Krishna and the spiritual energy is above the three modes. Therefore, when you come to the spiritual platform, then the mind can be controlled, not on the material platform. But Krishna says practice. <laughs> yes. The practice is to, to engage to remain steadily engaged in devotional service. If you think that you can be successful as soon as you begin, mm -hmm. then uh, you'll find yourself being bewildered. You have to practice. You have to understand the mind is chanchala. This verse by uh, by Arjuna is very instructive. He teaches, yeah. When Krishna tells him to control the mind, he says, I think it's more difficult to, than to control the wind. So everybody's mind is like that. It's wild. <laughs> we go to sleep at night and then the mind takes yeah. us in other realms of existence too. We wind up in different places we don't even want to be. Yeah. All of a sudden we're, we're doing something and all of a sudden a thought in the mind will come up and you'll wonder where's that thought coming from? Yes. So the mind is a composite composite of all of our activities and desires from previous lives, along with our along with this life. So uh, the mind is is not so easy to control because it's very it's filled with uh, impressions, desires, opinions everything from our activities in the material world right life after life after life because when we leave the body we take the same mind to the next body 
the gross body dies, but the mind and the intelligence and the sense of material sense of identity carries us to the next body. And therefore, we start again with the same mind that we left off in the last life. That's why sometimes people can remember things from previous lives or things from previous lives come up in dreams and people cannot connect certain experiences, mental experiences with anything they're doing in the present because a lot of these thoughts and desires have come from previous lifetimes. They remain in the, what they call unconscious. Mm. And they come to the surface sometimes in dreams and sometimes by circumstance. And the conscious part of the mind is the smaller part of the mind. The unconscious part of the mind is greater. But as we become Krishna conscious, we expand the power of our mind and the mind becomes more and more broad. And we use more and more of our mind and the mind can actually take us beyond the three modes of material energy. As it connects with the source, Krishna himself, or the power of the spiritual energy. Like yogis, they meditate. They raise the, their the life force through the different chakras, through the process of meditation, and bringing that life force all the way up to the Brahma Rudra, the highest form of um, the highest chakra within the material body. And then they can project that their themselves to another planet by the power of their meditation. So this is this is an example of how yogis have power. They practice mind control through different forms of meditation. But we can do it directly simply by connecting with devotional service. And when you think of Krishna, Krishna is not part of the material energy. He's above the material energy. So your mind is also going outside of the material energy into the spiritual realm when you think of Krishna. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Question is how to, when even when we are thinking of Krishna, the impressions, as you said, from the material world is still there and the thought comes. It's so difficult sometimes to become like thoughtless or impressionless and to really try to devote the mind at Krishna's lotus feet. It's even though the want is there, it's a process of, of uh, yeah. it's a process of uh, create creating that consciousness. Right, it doesn't come automatically. You're still deal dealing with the conditioned mind from previous births and from this present situation. So thoughts, desires, and many other things will come up in the mind to disturb one's uh, uh, attempt to focus on the supreme Lord. But gradually. As Krishna said, constant practice. He uses the word constant. He didn't say practice. It's constant practice. And detaching oneself from material activities. Then the mind can be fixed on the higher realm of existence. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Maharaj, one more question. You were talking about chance. Everything is by chance. Then I'm thinking, where is the free will then? Even though minute, we still have a little bit of free will. But if everything is a chance, do we actually even get a chance to execute the free will? No, I didn't say. I say chance means you don't know. I see. No, there is no... I mean, like, every, nothing happens by chance. That's what I meant. Yeah. So right. it's like everything is predetermined. Everything. Like, even the following, you gave the example that the thing fell uh, on his head. is, Yeah, every, everything happens. So then the... I... There's a cause behind everything. That's what. That's the. That's the answer. That's the understanding. Everything has a cause. Chance means I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So nothing happens by chance. Everything is kind of predetermined. So where do we actually execute the free will? Because even at minutest, we have the free will. You so have the, our, you have the free will to choose how to act and how to respond. Speak. Yeah. But but the uh, what was I gonna say the uh, 
the source behind everything is Krishna. He is the cause of all causes. Ishwar Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karnam Karnam. If you trace everything back to its source, you come to the Supreme Lord. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I have so many questions, but I'll go ahead and um, uh, ask the... I have Shukagara Prabhuji. Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Otherwise, I'll keep on asking questions too. Thank you, Nina Mataji. Thanks for allowing me to ask. And my favorite is Chandramali Maharaj. I get such a good answer from Maharaj. Maharaj, please accept my humble basis at your lotus feet. Maharaj, now, uh, from Bhagavad Gita, what we learned is Sitosna Sukadukkata and then Agama Apayano. And also, the next thing is that Maan Apamana. So, Sitosna is at the sensory level. We get happiness, heat, cold, and all. And the Sukadukka, we're getting in the mind. We feel happy and sad. And uh, then Maan Apamana, again, the false ego level. So, for this, what we have learned from Srila Prabhupada is. The sense can be controlled by having prasadam, only prasadam. Mind by chanting. And intelligence can be controlled by Bhagavata and uh, Chaitanya Chaitanya and Bhagavad Gita. And the false ego can be removed by Sadhu Sangha. So we have been hearing that chanting is 95% most important. But in one lecture I heard Prabhupada told Sadhu Sangha is the most important. So I was getting confused. Because Bharat Maharaj fell down from the bhava stage, he had to become an animal. So, is that sadhu sangha is very, very important. Just want to, I want you to throw light on that, Maharaj. Yeah, well, you just answered it by saying Bart Maharaj fell down because he was without sadhu sangha. He was alone in the forest and therefore he became victimized to, to his own mind. When sadhu sangha is there, the, the support of the association of devotees can allows one to perform the activities in the right way. In other words, we get inspiration from the devotees. We get opportunities for service in the association with devotees. We get yeah. courage, we get abilities to uh, get rid of our material attachments and material tendencies in the association. So, yeah, the foundation for all of the other activities Activities, such as hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is Sadhu Sangha. As the verse said, Satam Prasangam Mamavirya Sambhido Bhavanti Ritkarna Sayana Kata. So that verse says, in the association of uh, Satam, those who are above the material energy, in other words, the great souls, when one hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord becomes you know, a direct experience. So we perform the activities in association. But still, the Prabhupada is told 95% depends on chanting. Other things are the 5%. So I was getting, getting confused in that. If somebody is having Katha is hearing, but not able to chant more than 16 rounds, you know. So is, is that Katha to be given importance or to do more chanting and no Katha? That's what I want to know. Well, both of them are Krishna conscious activities. Both are glorifications mm -hmm. of the Lord. So once in the one mm -hmm. they're non-different. So uh, we have prescribed amounts of chanting that is given to us by the spiritual master. We follow that. Mm -hmm. If we do that much, then we can take part in other, other activities of glorification of the Lord. So that's fine. Or if you want to chant more, you can also do that. So, but why but, the enthusiasm is more in the hearing than chanting? Because chanting, sleep is coming and not sometimes it drags. But when you hear Bhagavatam, your katha, you don't know how the one hour passes. Well, that, so, that, that, that could also differ from person to person too. Oh. Yeah, some people are more inclined to one thing, one or another, another but they're, 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 they're all spiritual activities. Some are more inclined mm -hmm. to chanting. Some are more inclined to hearing. Some are more inclined to service. But mm. because the the inclination may be slightly different. 
still they're all spiritual and they're all meant to elevate the consciousness towards Krishna. Mm. But the essence is, you know, to chant the holy names of the Lord, which is the foundation mm. by which all of the other activities get their uh, get their potency from. Mm. That's why we put chanting first. So the taste for other activities will come only when you chant properly, the foundation. If that is done, the other things will follow. Is that clear? That's, that's been given emphasis by Lord Chaitanya as the Yuga Dharma. So mm. just like when you want to build a house, the foundation will determine ah. how strong the house is. So in our practice of Krishna consciousness, the found our our foundation for developing in all kinds of yeah is all based on chanting. We may be expert, a person may be expert in other areas, but they cannot sustain that unless they continue, unless they actually engage in chanting. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank Hare you, Krishna. Maharaj. I have a wonderful question in the chat box. It's by um, Shiv Kumar Prabhuji. He's well, writing. Mataji, why don't you take the hands that are here first instead of doing the sure. chat box? The chat okay. box can be done. Okay, sure. We have no more questions. There's three, absolutely. There's three hands are up here. Yes, absolutely. Jyoti Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mata? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam to you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam Guru Maharaj Ji. Uh, my question to you is, you mentioned about the three modes and the subconscious mind. So I was thinking the, uh, the conscious mind which is available to us is definitely an ignorant among the three. Is my understanding correct? Because more we purify, then the subconscious mind will be revealed. But you mentioned also that the mind broadens. So how that broadens means it, it goes, we are able to access to the subconscious mind. Is it like that? Uh, These broad, terms are so broaden means awareness. You become more and more aware. Aware, aware. of subconscious mind? The subconscious mind is is similar to the conscious mind, only it remains in a hidden state of existence. That's all. The, the same things are both in the subconscious and in the, in, in, in the conscious. But the subconscious is a, is a culmination of all of the activities that are there from previous lives. It's like a, a, the example will be a computer. You know, if you have a computer... You, when you're operating the computer, there's something up on the screen. And so you're dealing with what's on the screen. But you know, within the computer, there is unlimited amount of information. And that would be compared to the uh, subconscious. And what's up on the screen is compared to the conscious. So the mind is similar to a computer. It has both conscious and subconscious like that. So when something from the subconscious comes to the conscious mind, then it becomes a feature of the conscious mind. That's all. But it's not that it's a, it's a different. It may be different quality, but not necessarily. It could be just our experiences from previous lives. Okay. Like we don't remember our death. That remains. We we've died so many times in previous lives, but that remains in the subconscious. That experience of dying is there. But if that were to come to the conscious mind, then you would become, uh, you know, frightened and fearful. So that stays in the subconscious mind, but it's there. There was an experiment done in uh, the BBT on uh, on uh, it was a public broadcast. They put a person in meditation and they brought her back to a, another realm and she went into a previous life and then she started to really become very frightened. They had a stopped experiment because she was seeing her death in a previous life. So, so the unconscious mind protects us from what was there from the past, either both good and bad. We live. We have to deal with the reality of our conscious existence and not unconscious. We work with the conscious mind. So, uh, is my understanding correct, Maharaj Ji, that we 
we are unable to access both the conscious and unconscious we if we are alert then only we can able to understand what exactly is going but if we are not alert or say we are not in that platform then we'll not be able to understand what is going around us in our consciousness then what happens with the chanting so chanting first purifies the consciousness which is present on the screen and then it deals with the rest of the storage information stored in the subconscious is it like that yeah this like uh for example the when you you when you when you begin your chanting or you begin the process of devotional service your activities start to change but that doesn't mean your desires are changing the desires are on more on the subtle level you're still working to purify your desire but your activities change immediately for instance we give up you know illicit sex intoxication meeting and gambling so we no longer perform them but the subtle aspects of these same sinful activities still exist within the subconscious mind and can also come to the conscious mind so unless we continue with the process of purification those subconscious attachments will again come to the conscious mind just like they say for instance sex life so you give up sex life but then again what is the subtle aspect of sex life is profit adoration and distinction want to be popular want to be glorified want to be want to be seen as important these are subtle aspects of the gross aspect of sex life so every gross activity has a subtle connection that re remains within the, the the unconscious part of the mind so unless until both of those the both the subtle and the gross are purified then one hasn't reached perfection yet because that subtle aspects will carry us to the next life and then we begin again in another body with the same desires maraji i have very i have one more question say say we we see that our desires are not that strong that they, they are ruling us right now as we we are trying to practice but what if they become overpowering later as say 10 years 15 years there will be some hypocrisy in our mind or in our consciousness then how the devotees deal with it because i feel sometimes oh, i'm doing something but in reality i need to do something more then i feel lord has given me so much now i'm able to do so much but still i have to maintain or i have to pull back my conscience to the duties at that time I'm, i feel little hypocritical because i know what i'm doing and still doing material work so i just wanted to know how to deal with this Well, you still have attachments to the material therefore the mind is not fully purified yet and so as long as there is attachment there either subtle or gross the mind will be drawn back to that those attachments attachment is an is a force that connects one with one of the three modes of material energy depending on the quality of the attachment it either fits in the mode of goodness passion and ignorance so you have to control the mind by bringing the mind to krishna and engaging in devotional service and then gradually all of these other what we say flickerings of the mind drawing us back to these other areas will gradually decrease and then one will keep the mind focused on on the spiritual then it becomes more natural so it's a process of purification that's all we're talking about it doesn't happen as soon as you begin like when you go to a, if you're going on a trip you still have to get there so you have to go through whatever uh territories you have to travel to get to your destination you're not there as soon as you begin so in the same way you're still going to have to deal with your mind until it becomes purified through the process of glorification of the lord and serving the lord in the association of others <laughs> It's a process. Okay. So don't, true, don't, Madam. Don't become yes. overwhelmed by the fact that you're not perfect yet. <laughs> Sometimes I'm afraid of intelligence that 
more i'm aware i'm not able to do i don't know what intelligence will make me to do and when if i'm not able to well uh, the, the, you can get strength from association you'll get strength you'll get encouragement you'll get purification when you associate with advanced devotees that will move you along quickly on the path of purification and that, that's the most powerful force that we can access from the outside is devotee association senior devotee or you might say elevated association and on the individual level we read the books we chant we serve yes so true I'm so eternally grateful to you, Maharaji. I'm really eternally grateful. I I still want to inform you that I really chant loud when I'm not able to deal with the things that are affecting me in day in day out. I'm so grateful for your advices that you have given, and I daily go through your notes. I'm so grateful to you. Keep going you. as you long you'll you'll reach perfection if you just continue. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'll try to do my best. Thank you, Jyoti Mataji. Wonderful and, questions. And and as we make advancement, there are symptoms of those advancement. We become peaceful. We become free from anxiety. We don't find fault with others. We we are satisfied with whatever service we're doing. These are all symptoms. And satisfaction is not good, Maharajji. We little bliss and then whole next day chanting is spoiled <laughs> yeah, some contentment then i am drawn by it and i i hanker i just go behind it i don't know when i'll grow and when i'll have that spiritual thinking or life it's still in the material world rupa goswami says enthusiasm determination and patience <laughs> we'll try try <laughs> thank you so much eternally grateful to you and done with pranam to you a heartfelt uh, thank you jyoti mataji great questions uh, supriya mataji would you like to go ahead and pose your question please hare krishna maharaj dandavat pranam please accept my humble obeisances all glories to shila prabhupad Maharaj, um, we uh, I have heard this in the from Bhagavad Gita that Krishna says I am I am the sex which is according to dharma and yes. religious according to religious principle. Okay, but uh, and I am the in the gambling sorry amongst the cheat I am the gambler. So why don't we allow gambling when we allow sex according to dharma? So why don't we allow gambling uh, in our four regulatory principles? Gambling is uh, falls under the category of mental speculation and trying to get something for nothing. Uh, everyone is guided by their previous karma, at least on the material level. So you cannot increase your happiness nor can you decrease your suffering or vice versa simply by speculating and trying to uh, increase your happiness through these false methods such as gambling and taking chances and manipulating the material energy. And there's a verse. It's from the first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18 in the Bhagavatam. It says that one is allotted so much happiness and distress as long this is in the material sense. And as long as uh, one should not, you know, try to increase their happiness nor try to decrease their distress, one should just engage in devotional service. That's all. And then automatically you'll come to the platform of real happiness or what is called Brahma Sokyam, that happiness that is spiritual. And one will gradually, because on the a spiritual level, there's no such thing as distress. Distress is, falls into the category of material. So um, gambling is 
the thing is you can't increase your happiness and decrease your distress simply by speculating or game, engaging in different kinds of gambling. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, Maharaj, you. I have few other questions. Maharaj, when you uh, when you were discussing with uh, Jyoti Takne Mataji, then you said that uh, you know uh, uh, oh, right sorry. now, just now, uh, okay. uh, you said that sex uh, has a, 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 this gross activities has a subtle subtle, uh, subtle repercussions or subtle cause something behind it, like sex has a, a profit, um, popularity, and... Um, profit, adoration, distinction. Yeah. Ha, ha. So can you tell uh, what what happens with the other um, regulate, our other activities, such as gambling, um, meat eating, and... Uh, uh, Oh, the, the subtle aspects. The subtle yeah. aspects of those things. Yeah. Um, I'm not so much aware of all of them. I know what Prabhupada said about sex life, and, and how it. Once you stop it on the physical level, on the gross level, then it doesn't mean. Just like the example would be given is, if you want to cut a weed. You can cut the weed at the level of the earth, but still the root is in the is in the soil. And in due course of time, that root will again grow and the weed will reappear again. So the Krishna consciousness means to get rid of the uh, qualities, the bad qualities, both on the physical level, gross level, and on the subtle level, the unseen level. So each one of these gross activities has a subtle connection also. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as meat eating is concerned, I, I don't know. You give that up and then um, I cannot, uh, I don't, I haven't come across any statements about the subtle aspects of each one of these things. But there is a book, it's called The Four Regulative Principles. It was done by Satyaraj. He goes into these these details uh, in both the subtle and gross of the four regulative principles. If you can get a copy of that book, it's about the four regulative principles. He really explores it very deeply using Shastra. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maharaj, one more question uh, is about a soul purifying. Mm. Well, uh, we we use these different techniques uh, like japa etc. to purify, and I don't understand uh, uh, when it is mentioned here in uh, Canto two, chapter two, verse number twenty four, that when the uh, when say Mahatma's soul when it tries to go to the Brahma Loka, it passes through. The Vaishvanara Vaish, planet, which is a planet of a, a deity fire, and where they get completely cleansed of all contaminations. Mm -hmm. So, what exactly happened when we say it gets cleansed? Because, I mean, my understanding was a soul cannot be uh, changed, it cannot be washed, cannot be uh, cut, etc. So, what do you exactly mean when it passes through the fire, it gets cleansed? Well, the, the 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 uncleanliness is the contamination of the material mind. That's all. When the mind becomes pure and it reflects the nature of the pure soul, but as long as the mind is impure, the soul is still acting on the material level. Therefore, it, it appears to be impure, but the soul is never impure because the soul is is pure spiritual energy, part and parcel of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the material mind covers the the pure soul to whatever degree, and for the yogis, they 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 go they travel through different levels, but still they're taking their conditioned mind up to a certain level. So when they through the process of yoga, they can gradually get rid of this these different contaminations and come to what we say Brahman consciousness or 
pure spiritual mm. consciousness, not Krishna consciousness, but spiritual consciousness. Krishna consciousness is a is the highest level of spiritual consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Brahman consciousness, you mean is is it impersonal Brahman? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what that verse you referred to as. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you still have Brahman. time to take more questions? Yeah, we have two more hands, so I can see. Yeah, a few. So let's go ahead and ask one question at a time. So everybody gets a chance. Hemi Mataji, if you could kindly ask your question, please. Thank you, Neena Mataji, Danvat Pranam, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Danvat Pranam Maharaj, it was wonderful to see you at Sadhu Sangha and see your ecstatic dancing. It was wonderful. Uh, my question is that uh, we were discussing that uh, we should see Krishna in everybody, like in every being. So how how do you practically see Krishna in everybody? Like, <laughs> oh, that's a well. That's and there's verses that kind of illustrate it. Vin vidya vidya vinaya sampane brahmani gavi hastini. Suni Chaiva Swapake Chaya Panditat Savadarshanaha. One does not see the body, but one sees the soul. They see both, but they focus on the reality. And the body is simply a covering over the soul. So every living entity has a particular type of body, but every living entity is pure spirit soul. So next to that pure spirit soul in that body is the Supreme Lord, who is the indwelling super soul he is there so every soul is accompanied by the lord within within so to see the lord actually means to become fully pure 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 consciousness but at least he can see through knowledge that's another form of seeing seeing by knowledge So Marajan, if I see somebody, I should consciously remind myself that this is Krishna I am meeting. Yeah, that that, that in that you know, that that person is a, is part and parcel of Krishna. Krishna is within that heart of that person. Therefore, we respect all living entities because in the body of all living entities, Krishna is there. Thank you, Maharaj. Then we'll pronounce. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Aksar Dasa Dasa Anudas. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Then we'll pronounce. So, question is uh, I heard in an initiation lecture that Brahman lives in a present. So, how not to ever go in the past or get a glimpse of it? I'm not sure I understand your question. Like uh, how not to have the remembrance of past ever. Like in my 24 hours, I probably spend around mostly half or one hour in in, in past only. Oh, to, to live in the present rather than in mm -hmm. the past. You're asking about how to live in the present? Yes. Yeah, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur gives a nice little song. He says, forget the past that sleeps, ne'er the future, dream it all. Act in times with our, that are with thee, in progress she shall call. The past is gone. You can learn from. The future is just a dream. But the present is the only reality. So if you want to make the future more bright work on the present because whatever you do in the present will extend itself and become the future eventually so be present now <laughs> when you also uh, maharaj the lifespan reduces if we do prajalpa so we should always uh, do hari katha or talk about the lord so is there uh, any uh, Shastra Praman and for that, like because we have to do some worldly worldly talks on a day to day basis. 
yeah, so do it in the spirit of detachment. You do it as a necessity. Just like there's certain things that we have to do to take care of this body, because otherwise, if we don't, we don't can't take care of the body. It's a necessity. We have to eat. We have to pass stool. All of these things are, are something. But we don't put these things as as the most important thing in life. We just do them because they're necessary. So you're doing your material work because there's some necess necessity there. But you put your time, energy, and importance on your practice of Krishna consciousness. That's all. Thank you, Mahesh Hare Krishna. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your great question. We have one more question in the chat. It's from Shiva Kumar Prabhuji. He just logged off because he had to go. He says, um, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. We hear that bhakti is not checked or constrained by karma, but we understand our conditioning is obstructing our focus and progress in devotional service. Please clarify what is the cause of different conditioning of the individual? Is it not his or her past karma? Yeah, and your conditioning is your past material activities, which is considered, which comes out in the form of reactions. Yeah, good and bad as conditioning, but when you engage in devotional service, you're reducing the effects of your past karma. So and I then think... when you, yeah, Prabhupada said, when you, uh, when you, uh, you have a fan and if you want to stop the fan, you can pull out the plug and you can shut off the switch, but the fan will keep turning until the force of the fan eventually stops. So when we engage in devotional service, we're still getting the residue effects of our karma. It's still there until we reach a certain stage of bhakti, and then it's no longer it's no longer affecting us anymore. It's, we're free from that. All right. Thank you so much, Prabhupada Maharaj. Yes. Thank you. The karma will go in due course of time. Just stay engaged. That's all. And the karma will also affect us as long as it's still there. We have to we have to put it aside. We have to kind of like neglect it and just focus on the essence. That's all. Mm. If we're if we're still engaged in material activities. We're still compounding more karma. We want to stop that. Engage in spiritual activities. Yeah. So Maharaj, when we are, so I think there's a follow-up question uh, with regards to this question here. So when we see the bhakti is not constrained by karma and we continue to do the bhakti with our restrained consciousness, which is not full mindfulness, we are not really full mindful when we are still doing the bhakti, do we still progress or maybe at a very slow space? According to Krishna says, Yayatam mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham. As you approach me, I reward you yeah, accordingly. According to. You approach him 50%, you give 50%. Yes, Maharaj, you're right. There's a one quick question um, from Siddhak Singh Prabhu. He said, Maharaj, is trading considered as gambling? <laughs> trading trading by trading i think they mean in the stock market if you're trading for living day-to-day -day living i mean investing people's money in the stocks etc is that considered a gambling yeah it's gambling because it's speculative activities you can either lose you can either win you gain something you lose something so it's it's based on gambling yeah And so it's gambling, it's restricted. Devotees don't engage in these things. 
So if somebody is in that profession, Maharaj, and they are not doing speculation, then, they use, following... then let them use all of their profits to, to serve the Lord. That's all. That's a very good answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing that extra tip because if somebody's livelihood. Okay. Any further questions for His Holiness? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All the wish to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for wonderful class. Thank you so much for coming on the call and giving your wonderful association. Um, like so um, excited to see you in Charlotte. <laughs> uh yeah, we'll get there <laughs> sooner Thank or later. You. Yes, it's Thank coming you. up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Right now we're in Philadelphia. And this weekend is the New York Rath Theatres. Yes, much. Everybody should come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the big one of the best Rath Theatres in ISKCON. Oh, really? Yeah, it's powerful. <clears throat> Okay, so okay. thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. Please bless me so the consciousness <laughs> gets purified. You're struggling desperately, need your <clears throat> blessings and help, Maharaj. All of us, we will offer. <laughs> very nice, how beautiful! Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that one's for you. <laughs> thank you, yes. <laughs> This is Bengali. You can you can understand Bengali, right? Onek dhonnobad, onek dhonnobad. Chandramali Maharaj, apna rasil bad darkar. Let's offer our humble obeisances at Maharaja's lotus feet.